Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pedalcasters. I'm Philip. Hi, I'm George. Uh, we have here disaster area, micro clock. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Explain <laughs> it. What is this? That's a <laughs> clock pedal. So it's useful to synchronize your whole time-based pedals on your pedal board. Okay, so it's a tap tempo. Yeah. So it just sends tap pulses to pedals that have tap inputs. So your delays, your uh, tremolos, your modulations, if they can receive tap pulses, that's a way to control the, the time signatures for each of them. Okay, so these three inputs outputs that you have here? Yeah. What? They what have different functions, but they can control three units uh, at the same time. But uh, to go in depth, uh, the white and black ones, they have three main functions, sending tap uh, pulses, either normally open or normally closed, depending on your manufacturer, the uh, pedal that's receiving the pulses. And finally, and, oh, and also they serve as a toggle switch. So if you what have- What do you mean toggle, yeah? Yeah, it's to toggle either on or off, either for a pedal or for an amplifier. So okay, we're okay. gonna use it with the Vox amplifier. For those of you who know the amp, uh, on the back you have a uh, foot switch input and that is uh, to allow you to control your reverb on and off and also your tremolo. Okay, so it's also a foot switch? Yeah, okay. it can function as that. So instead of having to buy Vox's foot switch that's this big and it will not fit anywhere on my pedal boards, I can just use that and control a bunch of things okay. in one go. Why did you buy it specifically? We didn't talk about the red one. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the multi-jack. Uh, that one can either do any of these things that I explained or send MIDI information. It basically can also change presets via MIDI. Uh, each time you press, uh, you hold the foot switch, you go up a uh, bank. That's, uh, that all can also be sending a MIDI message to a pedal that has uh, MIDI communication via TRS cable such as Chase Bliss stuff and uh, Empress, uh, Alexander, those types of brands. Uh, and you can also synchronize them and uh, do it simultaneously. So both clock functioning and clock functions and uh, bank Total. information toggles. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but I know you bought it for a specific reason. Yeah. What was it? I bought it because I thought of my Boss DD20, the gig delay, uh, and uh, I always felt bad that it only had four uh, banks. So at the time it was made, presets weren't really a thing yet, unless for multi-effects and whatnot. And I thought this way I could expand the pedal's capabilities to pretty much <laughs> infinite, or at least within those 99 presets, which is more than any human needs. 99 presets out of this pedal, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that this means that you can adjust the tempo on those presets that you have here on this pedal and then change the, the, the amount of delays, the, the tempo of the delays that you have on your banks. Yeah, that's on your how, banks. How, I'm, uh, how I intend to use it. So you have those four types of delays stored in the four banks of the boss. Uh, imagine you keep the tempo on the boss uh, at a subdivision such as quarter notes so it functions properly with the uh, tap outputs of the disaster area pedal and I imagine I have the first preset with a uh, long digital delay and the second one with a something wacky like a reverse delay I know that when I change the, the preset it will change the correct tempo and also the subdivisions that I want so triplets quarter notes whatever you intend to and uh, I know that it will give me the delay that I want to hear depending on which bank I'm using on the DD20. So okay. it's really cool. And how easy is it to program? I find it really easy. Um, it only took me, I don't know, five minutes to, okay. to create presets. Um, and I, I really had fun just creating a preset where I'm both sending taps to the uh, DD20 and you know, switching turning, on yeah, the, the reverb, the reverb and the and whatnot. just by clicking on the yeah, on the single it's button. Really cool. Yeah, um, 
And how do you go up and down on the presses? Well, with the pedal by itself, you can only go up okay. by holding the foot switch. Yeah. Uh, but I've talked to the guys uh, from the Zester area and they told me that the next firmware update will allow you to, with an external pedal, scroll down or up the, on those presets. Okay, okay, cool. So that's yet to come. But mm -hmm. once that does, we're going to show it. Yeah. Okay, and it also has some cool functionalities. You can change the color of the LED, is it? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. One thing, if you've ever tried a, uh, a disaster area product, at least I have, is that you're almost blinded by how bright the thing is. Uh, I'm not sure if that's why they did it, but it works. So you have uh, different uh, intensity levels for the, um, the LEDs, and you okay. can also change the color of the taps. So okay. it can flash blue, green, violet, whatever you prefer. I'm just going to leave it at blue. <laughs> I like it. Okay, let's take a look at how it works and let's hear some sound. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Cool. So guys, now we're going to dive into the pedal's capabilities and show you what it does in depth. So as you can see, we have the DD20 connected to the uh, first output, the A output of the uh, disaster area. It's connected to the control pedal input of the Boss D20. And what it's doing is sending tap pulses to control the uh, delays of the D20. So the foot switch, as it says, it's a tap foot switch. You click it twice to send, oh, and it's precisely <laughs> exactly the same speed as it was. So you click it twice to always send in the uh, pulses. You can see it's changing what the DD20 shows on its screen. If you see a slight drift that is to be expected, uh, as the manual says, uh, what shows on the pedal is exactly what's being sent. But if you notice that for any reason, especially on longer delays, it might be, might be more noticeable, the pedal is drifting, you click it once, and after two seconds, what the uh, disaster area pedal does is it uh, retaps the whole thing so it resynchronizes the pedals that uh, it's connected to so that's a really neat feature so this if you hold it scrolls through presets so it's really simple you can only increase presets if you want to decrease presets you're going to have to add a different pedal uh, and uh, we're going to do that in the future once we have it all set up. As for the knob, it has, uh, if you scroll through it, you either increase or decrease BPMs and the pedal follows it, obviously. And if you click it, you enter specific uh, modes for each of the outputs. So like we've explained, output A is sending tap uh, tap pulses to the DD20 and as it shows it's sending them in uh, quarter notes so if you scroll through them you can make this uh, send eight dotted eight notes eight notes or triplets let's keep this in uh, quarter notes you click it again and you enter the output B setup it says on right now if you remember, we're using it as a toggle switch. This is controlling the tremolo of the box uh, AC15. So if it says on, it means that the tremolo is off. Scroll through it and you turn it on. Skip it off. Another click. You enter the setup for the uh, C output. And the same thing, but this time for reverb. So click it again and you're back to the uh, BPM screen, you hold it and you set the preset. It's really simple. So what we're going to show you is four presets that, actually five presets that we store, and where we start by having a uh, digital delay that's going at 120 BPMs. Then we're going to scroll to the next preset, which is the same thing but in uh, dotted eighth notes 
The next one will have tremolo turned on. After that, it'll be tremolo and reverb. And after that, it'll be just reverb. So it kind of shows you the many things you can do with one pedal being connected to three different functions. So let's hear how it sounds. So guys, to set up the pedal, it's really simple, you turn the power off, you turn it back on again, and while the screen is scrolling microclock, you hold the uh, knob and it now scrolls setup. You're in setup mode and this allows you to uh, set up each parameter in depth. So you have presets, which means the number of presets that the pedal uh, shows at any given time, so you can pretty much have uh, all presets that the cable is uh, that, that the pedal is capable of storing, which is 99, or you can um, keep it to minimum, like one, two, or if you're only scrolling between five of them, like we were for the purpose of this video, you can do that. And uh, MIDI channels, what each of the output is doing, uh, it even allows you to pick which color you want the LED to flash, so uh, it's really versatile. Also, you can choose the level, the brightness level. This is useful because I can tell you that uh, I have another uh, pedal from Disaster Area and I had to paint the LEDs with a black marker. Uh, I have to cover it up. That's how bright they were. It was actually, uh, it was actually uh, too much for uh, the purpose of indoor use. So that's it. You hold it again, chose save, uh, everything is stored now but in order for the pedal to load all the settings you have to turn it off again, turn it back on and now everything is stored again. So guys, we hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe if you did, give us a thumbs up. Yeah. Um... See you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.